Sure. Well, let's start. I was born in a very cold, wintry night. <laughs> I always drew. Like, I even remember going to MGM Studios in Florida, and I sat there for like an hour and a half watching the artist draw in Disney. I um, mean, there's a lot of fun stuff in Terminator 2 that now being a person that I have, I've gone and trained ILM multiple times. You know, I've had like 60, 80 artists in front of me. My dad really wanted me to go to, ironically, Sheridan College in Oakville, because uh, I'm Canadian. I was born in Canada. Just look at the last five years. Oh man, how much it's drastically changed. changed. Yeah. Yeah, software, hardware, web signing stuff that we can, like it's just now do tenure. There's even fashion companies that are using ZBrush. Jewelry yep. companies use ZBrush, right? I'll do, I'll, I'll sculpt this table. I don't care, just, <laughs> I know I need to build a resume, but the only way I'm gonna build a resume is getting into a studio. Yeah. And the only way somebody's gotta be able to willing to give me a shot. What's up, all? Welcome. What's up? It... <laughs> Finally, we are doing this after so long. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Good, good. You know what's interesting? You always interview people, and now I get to interview you. <laughs> That's true. I, that, that is true. Yeah. yeah flip, flip the script. Flip. Yeah. Or as yeah. they do in uh, usual, usual sorry. I flip your foot. I flip your foot. <laughs> it's my turn now, so we can talk about a lot of sure. things. How's it going, man? Good. Everything good, is great. Busy. busy. Busy as usual. Things are good. That's always good. busy as usual. Holiday season's always crazy. Yes. How's how's everything for you? It's going well. I mean, uh, busy as usual. Yeah, I've been doing a bunch of other activities besides CG and working and teaching and everything. But overall, it's actually yeah. good. Yeah, I'm actually thinking to do more interviews next year. Hopefully, uh, my plan didn't go as I wanted this year, but. Uh, I mean, it's good that we are talking because this is going to push me to do more. So There you go. Yeah, it's always good to talk to to the best. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but thanks. I don't know about that. Yeah. So how's it going? I mean, we can talk about a lot of things. I have a lot of questions we can talk about. Sure. Uh, um, so many things. I, maybe we can start with your story, like... You know, everyone knows you uh, as Paul in Pixologic, you know, doing all these demos about ZBrush and keeping the community together with the best, I would call it the best uh, 3D software that changed many, many lives, you know? Yeah, well, including my <laughs> own, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. everyone knows you from that, I guess. I don't know. Like, um, yeah. And then... Sure. So well, let's start. I was born in a very cold, wintry night. <laughs> Uh, Christmas Day. <laughs> you wanted to know. You want to know my history. What, what, yeah, what let's do it. When I was one, <laughs> let's okay, do I it. Fell off, fell off a bed, cracked my head open. No. Um, <laughs> so yeah, well, I went to school for CG. Actually, I've always a, was a kid that drew a lot. I loved drawing a lot, and I do have memories of actually uh, sitting with my dad at like the kitchen table and him drawing like cars and stuff. And then I'd tell him what I would want on the car, and he would put it on the car. So I was always doing a lot of coloring books and just drawing, drawing, drawing. Um, so it's just something I gravitated towards. Um, I'd always try for whatever reason, I'm, I was a big uh, about rendering and trying to get, make it look as good as possible. Then uh, when I got to college, it was a lot of different techniques I was experimenting with, which I enjoyed, but I was doing that my whole life. And then in high school, I did AP art classes, which were supposed to be college grade uh, classes. And then I was looking, I started looking at schools when I was probably 15, 14, mm. where I wanted to go. And you're talking the 90s, though. Wow. Right? How old are you? Uh, I'm going to be 43 in okay. eight days. Well, you don't look 43, but that's good. Yeah. So <laughs> My body yeah. says otherwise. I know what you mean. Yeah. I already feel that. I'm yeah. 37 and I feel the same thing. Well, I, I just got my hair cut done and I'm like, look down. I'm like, wow, look at all the gray I've got now. This is incredible. <laughs> yeah. I'm not worried about stuff like that. I, that, that. That stuff doesn't bother me. You're going to get yeah. old. You're going to get wrinkles. You're going to get grays. So I don't consume myself with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was always an admin kid, you know, I was involved in school trying to figure out different ways. We had a really good, we had this room in high school that you could go to. Mm -hmm. uh, and in all honesty, some kids use it to just skip classes, but uh, <laughs> it was a room for all like just college information. There was a wall full of college books. You know, the internet wasn't what it was in 1995, what it was today, right? That's the start of the internet. Okay. Yeah. My first computer was a Packard Bell 486, which was 
33 megahertz processor wow and eight megabytes of hard drive space like like that's what i started with my computer life with um we we just forget about how little we had and now it's always the biggest and greatest anyways I always drew like I remember going to MGM studios in Florida and I sat there for like an hour and a half watching the artist draw and Disney and I just loved it. So I started looking at schools for that, but then two little movies changed my life, I think, which is Jurassic Park and Terminator 2. That's what everyone says those... when I talk to them. <laughs> Jurassic Park, especially. Yeah, yeah from my I'm, from my from my you. era, right? Yeah. 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 Because you saw it, you're like, what <laughs> the heck? There is the good. Digital like I watch, dinosaur thingies. Yeah. Yeah. I still watch Terminator sometimes, to be honest, like once in a while. <laughs> uh, well, let's put it in context. Okay. This is right around the time Doom, the original Doom was. Oh, out, wow. Right? Yes. You got to put it in that context. You're playing a video game where it's very pixelated. Doom was amazing, but it's like very pixelated. You know, we're playing Nintendo in around that time nintendo 64 is just coming out and then you watch this film where you have these realistic dinosaurs and you got this guy that's turning into liquid and then then that's you know actually scratch that if you went to abyss first because that's when james cameron was like okay you guys because J- abyss was like i want to say 1990 maybe 91 one? i want to say 1990 if we're gonna was it 90 uh i don't even imdb remember. it i can imdb it IMDb. So when he did that movie, that's when he was. I saw an interview once with him. Said he said, "Oh, that's he knew." Boom! 89. I can do. Yes. Eighty nine. Okay, so I was close. Um, he he was like, "Boom! I can now do Terminator Two with the villain I have in my mind." So that was like the catapult into Terminator Two. Um, and there's a lot of fun stuff in Terminator Two that now being a person that I have, I've gone and trained ILM multiple times. You know, I've had like 60, 80 artists in front of me all the supervisors and everything training them and have hearing the stories that they have uh is awesome and i saw that and then saw jurassic park and then my mind went huh what is this cg thing what is this computer graphics thing okay and then but i still drew a lot my dad really wanted me to go to ironically sheridan college in oakville um, because i'm canadian i was born in canada uh, but I'm U.S. I went, I went back and forth across the board my whole life. Like every weekend when I lived in Canada, I was going to the U.S. side to see my U.S. side and then lived in Canada. And then I moved to the U.S. when I was in seventh grade. So however old we are, and then 14, then no, 13 probably then. So that's when I moved. And then I've been in the U.S. ever since then. But I can see myself retiring in, in Canada because Canada is just gorgeous um, for me, I think. Uh, I love the snow. The cold doesn't bother me at all. I'm I'm ho- I was out playing hockey. <laughs> <laughs> come to washington i would uh my wife though is the other person right so i don't uh, uh, the cloudiness out uh, of all the days yeah i know what you mean uh, yeah so i saw those and then i started what again back to high school we started going in this room and during my study halls i would just go to the room and start looking at colleges looking at the books looking online that i could <clears throat> and i know down to sheridan college and then uh bowling green state university scad because my art teacher is actually doing summer programs at SCAD. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was looking in those schools. I don't know. Looking back now, I have no idea why I didn't look at like NYU. I don't think they had a CG program then. That's why I think. But I'm a massive film buff. And I don't know why I just didn't want to go there for filmmaking. Because that I would love to make some films. I'm working on some films myself. Like everybody else in Hollywood. So we'll see what happens. That's another, that's another part of the story. So. Um, uh, I went for visits to Sheridan College. I went to visits at Bowling Green. I didn't go to SCAD to visit SCAD. Um, I trying to think in a couple schools in Buffalo area because that's where I grew up too. And uh, Sheridan College had no CG program. So it was all, look, we're going to pound you over the head with drawing. You're going to fill like multiple journal books of drawings a semester, like five to 10 you're nothing but drawing classes, draw, 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 draw. And it was like, you know, Disney style. And I loved it. And then looking, I also was a little bit of, uh, I didn't want to stop playing hockey. I was playing travel. I was playing for my high school. I was like, look, I put a lot of time into this. And I at least, at least in my college years, still would like to play a little bit if I could. And Sheridan College had actually killed the hockey program two years before I was looking at the school. Oh, damn. Uh, and so, and then Bowling Green didn't. So they had, a, and they were, a division one school. 
And then they had a CG program. They had labs, they had SGIs, O2 oxygens. And then the other lab was SGIs one. You're talking then those those computers, each one of those computers were like something like 10 grand, 15 grand. A license of Maya was like 15 grand, 30 grand, whatever it was. So you had to go to schools to to take advantage of this career because you can't afford it at home. It wasn't happening. Right. And then then there there was no YouTube. There's nothing that we all have today um, to do what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, It's changed a lot. Oh, God. What we can do now is incredible. It's insane. And it's such a short time, like in 10 years. And it's a short. Yeah. yeah, It's insane. People don't like even just look at the last five years. Oh, man. How much technology changed. changed. Yeah. Yeah. Software, hardware, web signing stuff that we can like. It's just now do 10 years. It's like, holy moly. Look what we were doing 10 years ago. I just found some old artwork of mine, like 12 year old. I'm like, holy cow. It's like uh, like, Stone Age, right? (laughs) Yeah. I was actually, I was like pleasantly surprised. Like, ah. It's not that bad. I thought it'd be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not like I'm not like shouting from the rooftop. Look at me. Look at this piece. But I'm like, it's not. It's not horrible. My very well, first our- piece of brush, I would never show. But. Oh, I see. Um, Maybe you can show it today. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I even have it. Uh, oh, it, okay. It'd be hard to find. It'd be hard to find. I had to find it on Z. It's probably on ZBrush Central. I have, I'd have my, to find it on ZBrush. You know, I have my first pieces of ZBrush in ZBrush Central. I remember when I was sitting in my room back in Iran and. 2007 before i leave uh, move out of yeah. iran and i still yeah. I, I still they're they're still there it's funny because when i put it on, on the zebra center i didn't get a top row and i was like why am i not getting a top row and i'm looking at it now i'm like okay i, I see why now i'm not i didn't get anything at that time because it, it's bad you know <laughs> yeah i don't even i don't even know i don't because you're talking about that same time <laughs> for me too uh you're yeah, you're you're talking that far back as well. Yeah. For me, I want to say 2005. I started. I taught ZBrush myself. I went to SIGGRAPH. I saw it. And I said, "Oh my God, this is the software I've been looking for." You know. But I before that too. Let me share a little bit. I, this is important for anybody that's listening to. I think because as artists, we got these things on our shoulders. That are like, "Hey, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to be good." Right. And it was a struggle for me to get in the industry. And I'm not going to lie. I kind of gave up for a little bit because it was like. I just, I can't get in like, and unfortunately, a lot of times the industry is sometimes it does come down to who, you know, and say, Hey, go hire this. This person's amazing. Bring them in for an interview. So I actually had that, right. I was doing freelance work on the side and then still obviously I had to work full time to pay my bills. Yes. Um, and then college bills came knocking after college. So I ended up going to Bowling Green State University. I played college hockey while I was there on the club team. And then I was learning the CG thing. That's where I got introduced to Maya. Um, so this is 2003, four, right? 2003, 2002 for what? Bowling Green? Maya when you were introduced. No, I've been using Maya since 1997. Yeah, no, I started 90. I graduated college in 20, uh, 2002. Uh, so I was using Maya two, and then it went right into 2.5. If I remember right, my freshman year. So I've been using Maya since then. Um, and then, so I went to SIGGRAPH. In 2005, I've gone a couple of times and that's SIGGRAPH. That's when SIGGRAPH was amazing. It was awesome place to go. Uh, um, and then I saw ZBrush. I was like, what is this? This is incredible. <laughs> uh, and the colleague that I still work with is the one that I sat for a little bit and talked to him about it. He's still at Pixelogic. And I was like, I got to buy this. How much is this? How much is this thing? And they're like, well, we're giving a show deal. And it was like, I think I paid $400 for ZBrush. The then time. I walked over to Noman. In their booth, and I bought a DVD by Meets Myers and a DVD by um, Alex Alvarez, Zach Petrock. Zach <laughs> oh, Zach Petrock, yes. Yeah, and then I was working 13, 14 hour days. Mm-hmm. I would come home at like midnight sometimes or eleven p.m. and I would stay up till two or three in the morning, roll back into my bed, wake up and go to work and do it all again, rinse and repeat, and just teaching ZBrush to myself. And the way I like to teach, learn something for me is I'll watch maybe somebody do something, and then I can retain quite a bit. And then I'll go try and just replicate it without watching it again. And that forces me to retain it even faster. And then when I couldn't remember, oh man, what did that feature do? I knew what part of the video to fast forward to, to go rewatch that again. And then that was it. I didn't have to watch it again. I got it. Cause then I had aha moments putting the things together. So ironically now, you know, meets Meyer and Zach Patrick, especially Zach, we've become really good friends and meets been really good friends. And now That's I'm obviously crazy, the tables have flipped because <laughs> if they have a ZBrush issue, I'm the guy that they wanted. Obviously, <laughs> that's text. amazing. They're yeah. both like so, both great. Yeah. 
Yeah, which is funny now for me. Yeah. Um, so then taught it to myself and then bought it at SIGGRAPH uh, for 400 bucks. Just kept working on it, working on it, working on it. And um, I'm like, I need a brain, somebody to sit with to that knows at least a little bit about this program. So I can just pluck, pluck more and more information. Mm. Cause again, even then in 2004, 2005, there, YouTube wasn't, I don't even know if no, YouTube was around it didn't, it didn't exist. No, YouTube, YouTube yeah. really so became you YouTube in 2012. Yeah, yeah. You can just go ZBrush video and just get a arm's length, body's length of information. So I went to Noman as an extension student. And then my instructor was Matt, Maddie Spencer, which I ended up fast forwarding, working on some of her books. Yeah. I was the technical uh, artist for her books and everything. And so I was able to pluck her brain uh, as much as I could. And then I said, this is it. This is the software I've been looking for. That's going to get me where I want to be and how I want to get in this industry. So I just kept going and going and going. And then um, I had a friend who was a childhood actor and I knew the parents and all that. And they're like, Hey, we worked on a film. We knew we were talking to the producers of star Trek. Um, the, the, the one dad was all the way beginning, super famous. And then his son was doing a lot of stuff. And I said, go see him. He's got a studio in Pasadena. Um, I forget what it's called. Now. It was called Skyrim, I think. I don't remember now. And maybe he'll let you get you an interview. And that's what happened. He got me in an interview. I was at the studio for almost three hours in the interview. And this is when ZBrush was just really now starting to make some headway. ZBrush 2, um, right? Lord of the Rings. And especially yeah. Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean 2, that's it. When people saw Lord of the Rings and Pirates of the Caribbean 2, that was put ZBrush on the map. People were like, wait a minute, how did you do all these details? And it was ZBrush that gave them those details. Yep. And so I was in the studio and they brought in the supervisors and everything. I'm sitting there, I'm showing my ZBrush stuff. They're showing me the projects that I'm working on. And I'm like, oh man, I could do this. You know, it's one of those things, look, I'm just, look, and I was honest, I'm like, look, I'm just trying to get in, right? I'll do, I'll, I'll sculpt this table. I don't care, just, <laughs> I know I need to build a resume, but the only way I'm going to build a resume is getting into a studio. Yeah. And the only way somebody's got to be able to willing to give me a shot. And then I won't disappoint. I will come through like flying colors. Trust me. I'll knock. And I was with them for three hours. Right. And then mm. we ended the interview. The, the guy looked me cold dead in the face and goes, look, dude, I, I love you, man. I would hire you right now if I could. But honestly, I was only doing this as a favor. I thought this was going to be like a 30 minute thing, just helping out the producer that, or that sent you my way. And uh, we ended up just getting in a great conversation and diving in. I brought the supervisors in. I don't have any positions. There is nothing. So, uh, but if something opens up, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a call. Right. So obviously that's a wah, wah, wah. And I'm always telling this story because uh, through all my years of doing all, there's so many stories like this and everybody has. So anybody who's listened to this as like a student or anything like that, you just got to keep trucking along. So this is how I'm also going to get in my job at, at Pixelogic. So then I just kept emailing him and, you know, every now and then sending him some more ZBrush work. And he's like, oh man, it's great, but we just don't have anything still. Which right year now. is this? This was probably around 2006. Okay. Right, right around that time, I was doing the same thing. I was sending some work to Luma Pictures as an example to get hired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. It's, mm -hmm. I'm just relating to your story. It's very interesting. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, and back then we were doing with these things. People are called VHSs. So they're these yeah. tapes and you stick them in this thing and it plays and it, the quality is not good, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then it got switched to DVDs. Oh, I got a great story about some guy oh. I talked to at EA. Okay. Oh, my God, great story. Let me story. write that down. So. Um, let me finish this one, though. Yeah, so, go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> So I kept going back and forth and nothing was happening there. So I just kept doing some freelance work and working my full-time job. Uh, and I was a manager. Uh, I was working at Best Buy being a manager because that's what I went to college for. So I need to pay my college bills. And then I wasn't getting, you know, and I had to also do freelance and do some artwork on the side. And, and then uh, I was like, you know what? I'm really digging ZBrush. And then I went and I said, look, I got to make a life change. This is it. I got to, I, I got to, am I going to grab the grip and hold my life in my own hands and not waste the $75,000 of investment I made on myself in college and be one of those people that went to college and do nothing with that piece of paper, or do I want to do something with it? And I made a conscious decision. I'm going to do something with it. So I demoted myself. I took about $30,000 pay cut, $25,000 pay cut, 
They said, look, I got to focus on the artwork. I don't care about this anymore. I, I'm never really, this is not me. I've been great at sales. I can run teams, really good at motivating people, that kind of stuff. I enjoy that. I enjoy working with people. I enjoy seeing people's eyes come to life. That's why I like enjoy teaching as well. It's, I, it's just an enjoyable thing to give back. And I think I give back because of part of this story. Well, me coming up, there was nothing that I could latch on to to learn. So I'm all about, look, I will beep, 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 dump truck ZBrush information on you if you want it. So I said, I'm making a change. Every day, I just kept doing artwork and sending out, sending out my demo reel, sending out, you know, messages, doing everything. Every day, I said, every night, I got at least three times, three places to send out my information. And Pixelogic was one of those. And... Um, at that time, they, we were transferring from one office into another one. So they were busy transferring uh, locations. And my COO now, who is the person I was talking to, uh, goes, hey, look, we don't have anything open right now, but it was great meeting you and talking to you. Just keep in touch. So every month, I just kept emailing him and emailing him every single month, at least once a month and not twice a month. Hey, And it would be more the casual Hey, how's the move going? I know you said you were doing some construction and stuff. So relatable to them a little bit, not just, Hey, where's the job, right? Kind of a thing. (laughs) Hey, by the way, here's Zebra central post of some new work I put up just so you saw it. And then, uh, and just, it's like I said, sometimes some of it is also luck and the, the great Ryan Kingsling decided to leave pixel logic and the door opened to me and that my boss said, Hey, I've been talking to this kid for literally seven months, he keeps emailing me every month. Let's bring him in for an interview. And I came in for it. He still makes fun of me because I came in with a tie and everything. He's like, he's like, I don't (laughs) dress like that at all. And he makes me, you all came in with like a suit. I'm like, I wasn't wearing a suit. I was wearing a tie. I think a hundred percent. You don't show up in an interview without wearing a tie. And I'm wearing ties all day. I'm in a business atmosphere. (laughs) So I'm wearing ties. So I'm like, whatever. And uh, yeah, by the end of the interview, he offered me the job. And I was like, that was it. At the same time. And, yeah, but it took again. I had to have that fall that happened to and then grip my life. And then still, it's not like I got the interview right away. I just kept following up and following up and following mm, up and following yeah. up. With and that. then uh, when did right. you get get the job? 2007? Yeah, I'm going on 13 years. It, April 1st will be 13 years. Oh, 2009 so, then. 2008. 2000, yeah, 2009. No, 2008. Oh, okay. So it's no, going to be 14 years. No, because you got to go April 1st of 2008 and then you go 2009 would be one year yes. and then go from there. So 8 to 2008 to 2022. 2008 to, to, to now, yeah. Oh, till now. yeah, 13 and a half. So in, in five months, it's yeah. going to, four months going to be 14 years. That's crazy, 14 years. Damn, April so 1st. April, April 1st. 1st. You know what's interesting? Um, so right around that time, I actually got my full-time job. It's very oh, interesting. Really? Like, yeah, it seems like the industry has started changing right around 2008 when the financial crisis happened, the crash, mar- stock market and housing market crashed. I kind of feel like it's kind of related because more people wanted to have more entertainment, sit at home, not to spend money, just watch movies and play games. So the industry, our industry started growing. Uh-huh. You know, yeah, I think could- the technology started really ramping up yeah. in 2000s too, which yes. caused the companies to have more room for more hires because then they were getting more business. Right, because then you got to think it wasn't just now the film and, and the gaming world. Commercials now are wanting to take advantage of the digital, and many multiple other industries started wanting to take lots of industries. You know, the automotive, aviation,s construction, all that, all that started ramping up because the computers were getting strong enough and fast enough and cheap enough for all of us to start doing more. And I think that's also part. You know, you have the industrial boom. You know, in the early 1900s, I think there obviously there's the tech boom which yes. is after the dot-com boom. So for me, if I was making a timeline, there's their top dot-com boom in the 90s. And then that led into the tech boom because then all the technology started getting better because of the dot-com boom. Yeah. And then that was it. Like Intel started skyrocketing. And then you had this thing called Google show up and yeah. that was it, <laughs> right? So yeah. I think so, that's part of it. I'm with you too, but I think that's part of it. Yeah, too. yeah. All it of is, it together, it's all related. It all, Yeah, it's the perfect storm. Yeah, perfect and I, I I wonder if we were at the right uh, at the right place at the right time because sometimes luck plays What's a rule, like? you know. You, do you think that way too? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like you got it, it is part of partially right place, right time, and right situation. Like, look at me. I would probably not be at Pixel Logic if Ryan didn't decide to leave Pixel. Yeah, 
he decided to leave, which opened a spot for me. Um, you know, uh, I only met Louis Tucci because he was in a Nomen class with two of my colleagues at Pixelogic. And they're like, hey, Paul, I know you're looking for somebody to work for you for to help you with some stuff. We got this kid from Canada. I'm like, oh, from Canada, he's good to go. And ironically, he grew up right where I around close to where I grew up. And then Louis came into the office like, let's I'm bring him aboard. Louis, come on, I'm gonna bring you aboard. If Louis didn't go to Noman, go all the way from C- ZBrush in a basement in Toronto, or Canada, didn't make the trip to Noman to sit next to my colleague to say, hey, my colleague's looking for somebody to do an internship. Louis wouldn't have that path that he had. Like, there's yeah, there's tons of paths like that. I think, and it, that's my story. Is there's a path I had to have an opening, uh, but I also. With that said, I made I also made the passion. I made the decision to go. I didn't wait for it to fall in my lap. I went went and ironically, the day I got job offered at Pixelogic, I came home and I had two um, calls on my answering machine. Okay, the answering machine people was this little thing that people would call and leave a message, uh, not like <laughs> cell phone. It doesn't exist we, anymore. We made a yeah. tape. <laughs> Wow. Um, I had two people said, Hey, we want to bring you in for an interview. Two studios. Wow. The day I got the job at Pixel Is it isn't it always like that? You're looking for a job, no one wants to talk to you, and then you get like five offers at the same time, and you're like, What should I do now? <laughs> That's crazy. Yep. yep. I mean, yeah, so so the reason I said um we might be a lot I'm pretty sure luck is involved, but also I'm wondering the reason I say this is because there are so many different pe- new people coming to the industry, young people, they have dreams, they want to become a character artist or any sort of artist, like in two months, six months, working at studio on their fa- favorite game, you know, and the industry is becoming more competitive, but it's also, it's also growing fast, like insanely fast. Mm-hmm. And um, so I'm like, do they have the same chance that we had or are they more lucky because mm. companies are willing to hire more from out so out of the country. I, I, well, I think it's a mix of both, but I think now with all like let's there's people that just got hired, honestly, pl- pl- posting an image on ZBrush Central or ArtStation. I know tons of stories where someone posted a model and then they're boom, they're hired. Like you know, there's, I know a lot of artists with that, and you got to think about worldly, right? There's people I know a lot of artists in the world that post an image. And then that studio's like, dude, I love your work. We want to, and then they they sponsor them. They move to the United States. Like that opportunity would not be available without the internet and having things like Zebra Central or an art station or what used to be CG Hub and all that stuff, right? Or all that without it, yeah, that would have been been difficult to find that artist that's sitting in France, Russia, or wherever they are. It would have been very difficult. Yeah, and social media didn't so, exist. I don't know if you remember at the no. time. My my artwork when I posted on uh, this is 2012. I was actually trying my best to move to USA, you know, or, or any other country because I wanted to. Uh, my priority was freedom, you know, and I wanted to also work as an artist and gain my freedom at the same time. I was targeting two goals, but let me show you actually. This this might give you some idea. I don't know if you you remember this one. Do you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> you guys made a post on Pixelogic about making off and. I was like, damn, I'm getting noticed. It's great. And then I got yeah, the I yeah, yeah, this is this is 2012, 10 years ago. And when I look at my life from now, comparing it to 10 years ago, I'm like, damn, it's insane, man. Like I'm just yeah. sometimes I'm I don't know, like it's it's hard. Like it's just, I, I kind of become a speechless because um like I got a lot of awards for this one. I still like it, but um, you know. So many artists out there are doing so many amazing artwork, much better than what I yeah. did at the time. And this yeah. actually well, saved my life. But also, you had context. What you had tool-wise at your disposal yeah. was not the same. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. we have now. Yeah. I had to use like, go look up, Go do this. Watch this. Do this. Go look at Sebastian Legrand and put Eva, Eva 1. He's a French artist that okay. was in Montreal. Um. He worked at Eidos. I don't. I believe he might still be there. I haven't talked to him in years. Okay, there you go. So go to his art station right there. The third image. The third image. This one. Yeah. Okay. Click on that. There you go. Okay. This is one hundred percent ZBrush. Yeah. All ZBrush. But he did it like twelve years ago. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I show this piece to every time to my students and go look. We can we can cry about the tools we have, but look what artists were doing with what they had. Yeah, it's my the same thing. Go the look same. at Renaissance artists. They were making marble slabs and they were making yeah. insane, amazing stuff. Like, look for what we had. Like, 
Yeah, he did. I want to say 12 years ago. It might have been 11 years ago. Mike did the same kind of thing. Actually, these are, I don't know which one is old, but I know that he was doing some insane stuff with ZBrush at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was, he was very good. But that's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, that was that's two and a half D. That's all two and a half D. Oh yeah, perspective 3D, didn't like, exist, right? No, it exists, but he, he you this is when ZBrush was you pick up and drop, pick up and drop, so 2.0. Oh okay. and to get all the hard surface stuff, that's all two and a half D stuff. Like oh, yeah, the main piece was made in made in 3D. He made the pieces in 3D, but then a lot of the details was two and a half D, dropping it. So this is more than stuff. 12 years ago because 2000 uh I can probably you, hear. Let me see. I, I can find it probably. Yeah, you guys had two thousand eight. You guys, you guys had ZBrush three, two thousand nine. I don't know. Yeah, actually, I remember. So uh, yeah, the three point three point oh came out. I want to say around two thousand and five ish. Yeah. So this is yeah yes. probably. Well, he did it. In, he did it in three point one. I think. Oh okay. But we didn't have. You didn't have Dynamesh. You didn't have Z Modeler. Yes. You didn't have okay. Z Remesher. You didn't have. Everything that most people use, probably 80% of their pipeline is ZBrush. He didn't Doesn't have it then. Exist. Didn't exist. That's didn't crazy. exist. Yeah. It's so insane. that's what I'm saying. And you've got to put everything in context, right? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think what people are, and what people are doing as an instructor, what people are doing is insane. Like kids, what they're kicking out today is just, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Did you see it's the crazy. summary I made all in ZBrush? I hope, I think that's going to make you happy to, to know. <laughs> Let me show you. Even the low res. This one, I made it all in ZBrush for my class. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all ZBrush, everything, except the nice. cloth, which is marvelous. Yeah. But I made all of these things with ZBrush, uh, all the details. Even yeah, I, started and on a, I started actually working on a samurai myself, too. Oh, that's cool. So you said you went to college. I wanted to, while well, you find out, do you think college was useful? And do you think you did the right thing working as an artist? after this many years or you feel like um well, eh. that's a that's a good question i think you you're making an investment on yourself right yeah. so you can't really go wrong going to college um if i had to do it all over again i would have probably like i said looking back i probably would have looked at nyu and obviously uh, i didn't know about nomen i would have looked at nomen because that's mm -hmm. right when I, nomen was starting too in the 90s is when nomen was first starting out so that's why i didn't know yeah. about it um, ironically, I came to know him for an event for uh, XSI in 2000 when there was only like they only had three rooms at that time. They're like three labs. That's it. Listen, I think it's a hit. It comes down to, OK, here's what I always tell students like, look, going to school is not a bad thing. It's not a wrong thing. You're, gonna, you're, you're going for a reason. You want to learn about a craft. That's the point of higher education. You want to learn about a craft that gets you a job. So the most important thing to look at is what is the job placement for that school? So do they help you at all? The Bowling Green didn't help me at all. They had no idea what they were doing. And then number two, who are your instructors? Are they actually people that know what they're talking about? Or are they what I like to call a glorified student, where there was a student that did the program, then they didn't get a job, so they stayed and became one of the instructors. And they were just the top student in their class. But then I'm like, then they only know what they know. They don't know anything else because they've never been in the industry. Yes. To know. And so they're only going to teach you, you're, they're plateauing you at this when you should be here. So you got to look at that. And then also, even if somebody was in the industry, I would also look at when was the last time they were in the industry? Was it somebody that left the industry 10 years ago? Are they just showing you stuff that was 10 years ago? Because um, it's, you know, the industries are always growing and changing. So as an instructor, you got to stay on top of what's happening and stay connected. Yeah to what is changing in each of the pipelines and how the pipelines are. Changing. And as a person that's helped build a lot of pipelines in the gaming field, the film field, like I helped legacy effect buy their first 3d printer ever. Like I was the guy that they called and came in. I sat with them wow. and hooked them up with the company. They ended up buying the printer, which was at that time was called object. Uh -huh. And that's their first printer that they bought. And I sat with like John and Shane with Scott Patton said, oh, this is what I've been discovering from 3D printing because I've been in 3D printing for 13 years. So I was helping them and they were just saying, hey, give me your advice and what you've seen because you're getting around seeing all this and we're looking at getting into this. So, and that's part of what my job has been at 
pixel logic. I've been gone and building pipelines and I'm talking about not just those industries. I'm talking about the medical industries and I'm talking about multiple sectors. I'm helped with medical illustrators use ZBrush. Now there are people doing like head replacement, face replacement, ears replacements. I've been to UCLA where I have a cadaver sitting next to me and we're trying to figure out, they're trying to figure out stuff for making videos to teach the actual doctors how to do surgery and they're using ZBrush to do it. And then all the way down to the molecular level, right? Doing all the, here's COVID. Like they're using ZBrush to make <laughs> wow. COVID. Right? This is very you interesting know, that the software is, you can do a lot of things with it. It's not just about making mm -hmm. games or characters. So, you know, there's a lot all. of, yeah, that's the thing. Like, no. um, you know, I, I most of the artists that I know, like especially the new generation, they're only after like getting a job in the game industry and they don't know that you can work in, if, like because of this software, you can work anywhere. You can work at NASA or, you know, Tesla or yeah. any company. Basically, there are artists. I talk to artists on a regular basis at Tesla. There's artists at Boeing, Airbus. Yeah. Well, a lot of the automotive companies, mostly auto Mercedes. There's even fashion companies that are using ZBrush. Jewelry yeah. companies use ZBrush. Yeah, that's the core it's of it. It's <laughs> endless. It's endless. If it's an application that you, I would say ZBrush is probably one of the only applications. That is in that many sectors of businesses, and it, and they're taking actually a relatively large chunk of the pipeline. They're not like one percent of the pipeline. They're like twenty percent, or fifty percent, or even ninety percent of the pipeline. Right? You take certain companies now have adapted because of things like Z Modeler now and all that. You're like, we don't need all the other pieces of software now. We just need ZBrush and maybe another piece of software. It depends again on the pipeline. If you're in like a gaming world, you're going to use something like ZBrush. You're obviously going to use Substance. You can use either Max or Maya or something like that. Or, and then you're going to use an engine. Then you're going to move, use Marvelous Designer. But if you're at some place, i.e., let's say a toy company, you can do everything in ZBrush. And then all you're doing then is using something else to get it ready for production, whether, yeah. and then that's choice by them what they want to use. Um, for that. Uh, and then that's it. It's two pieces of software. It comes down to in some cases. And then I don't, I use one, I use ZBrush to do everything. I got my big 24 inch gremlin sitting over here. That's mm. all mechanic. He's magnetic. Um, and I did it all in ZBrush because I bought earth magnets. I did all, I made insert mesh brush with the exact size that I needed for an earth magnet and then just drew it out on my gremlin and bingo it's done. Here I can, we can probably put them on camera so people yeah, understand what the heck I'm talking can. about. Here, uh, let's grab them, and then I'll show you even a bigger. I'll show you even a bigger one. So you know, he's twenty four wow. inches. Yeah, you should, I saw this one before. That's crazy. <laughs> That's huge. Yeah, and then everything is magnetized. So see, I got magnets. That's crazy, and it's all perfectly matching. Fine, like yeah, just and then it, it just slides slides in, and then magnetizes in. Did you have to work on the holes, adjust them, or anything, or sand it, nope. or just perfectly no. matching? I did this is straight out the printer. I did nothing except I did six layers of painting to make them look like a bronze. And so this is like a hundred dollars of material too. And the printer I did it on is an artillery and it's only a $350 printer. So for 450 bucks, I made my own gremlin. Look how big this is. Wow. That's huge. You could make a mask of it. Right here. Yeah. This is, if I printed this whole guy out, he'd probably be three. This one would probably be three and a half feet to four feet. Oh, put, it's like one to one practically. Yeah, the details are great. So, yeah. so you modeled in the, modeled that in ZBrush yourself and then printed every that? single bit. Every single scale is actually hand sculpted. I didn't use any alphas at all. I did. I wanted to do old school, a little nod to how they had to do it in the film industry. You have to then you do patterns and stuff. But no, I did everything by hand in essence inside of ZBrush. The APC from Aliens that I made. So I do, I do a Christmas tree ornaments every year with my family and if they're eighties, they gotta be eighties theme. So this is this year's, I did the drop ship too. So I made loops right here so I can put them in and hang on it on the tree. And cause then I made the gremlin, I made the gremlin as well into Christmas tree. And then here's a little garbage pail kids. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a stop motion animation. You can go to YouTube. I did, I did this for them. What so if you called? go to YouTube and go to uh, GPK, the there's some stop motion animations. I did the vehicles. We're all done in ZBrush, all engineered in ZBrush. I didn't use any other piece of software. What's the name of the channel? Uh, let me see if I can find. Let me see if I can find it real quick right. for you, and I can give you the link. While you do that, so I was so, saying this, you could print a lot of tools with it, like for woodworking or, 
Even uh, uh, for other things, you know, you can just just make yep. it in ZBrush and print it. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I'm working on some stuff uh, for some friends too, because I'm sure you get it as a digital artist. Like, hey, can you make this for me? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's see. It's on. Now it's tops. more about NFTs. Can you make this NFT? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm getting hit up for NFTs. <laughs> okay, here you go. So, Mad Mike Fury Road. So there's three three parts, if I remember right. So here, let me put this in the. You can put it on in our little room. chat here. Oh, you okay, so this is also well. a career path. Stop motion animation. A little ton of it is ZBrush now. Everything from Leica, all of them, it's ZBrush. Coraline had ZBrush in it. So this is the one. Yeah, there you go. So the vehicles, the three vehicles in this, I think they're near the go more towards the end. So they're doing these stop little mo these stop motions for garbage pail kids. And I know the team there. And uh, I've been working on a bunch of their pieces, which the one I just showed, which is in I think the third part of it wow so they print um, these as, and use it for a stop motion yep yeah i printed i read to had to redo one of the heads because actually funko makes these too so they're using some of funko's versions but then one of the faces for this main one this is uh you know this is um mad mike fury load so it's a take on obviously mad max um and mad mike's head by funko for the animator wasn't going to work so I had to remake a new Mad, uh, a Mad Mike head for him, printed it, and I had to have it so it'd, it'd pop on Funko's body. And then, so we, we him and I worked on that together. Um, so you keep going. There'll be the there's going to be vehicles. Keep going. Um, so I had the yeah, So that head I did that head. Oh, this one I did that head. The one that dropped. and there's those three vehicles. All three of those vehicles, I did those and print them out of my house. I have three <laughs> printers. Those are all mine. Those are all ZBrush. All three of those are ZBrush. That's crazy, man. And Looks then like Joe Simco did the painting. Looks like CG. <laughs> yeah, but they're all stop motion. It's all stop motion. Wow. It's going too. So this is wow. also stuff that you can do. Um, and uh, like I said, I have three D three three D printers. My there you go. There's my name right there. Oh yeah, Paul. Um, stuff that did right. Yeah. So then there's like three parts to this, if I remember right. It was, it's funny. Yeah, there's three volumes to it. Mm. Do you want like to the one, it? the second volume's got 520,000 views for them. This one had 300. Five months ago. Yeah. Oh, they, so is it on their channel? Yep. Here, here's their, here's their channel. This is the one? Hold on. Mm, yeah. Yeah, scroll down. I think you're on the right one. Go to their homepage. It's, it's, it should be just tops. Oh. The same top. Yeah, there you go. That one, this one. Scroll down now. It's down further. You'll see it. Keep going. It's colorful. Oh, keep going. Oh, I see. There you go. This right one. there. There you go. Those three. So uh, there you go. There's another career path. I worked on the the vehicles, not that one. I didn't do that one. I did only the of the three. I did that one, not that one. I did that one. It's insane that so. uh, you know it comes down to. 3D printing something and then doing this stop motion. It's the same thing. It's yep. a it's the job of a 3D artist. It's not like before you just pick up, I mean, use clay to build. You can they still do that, but this is crazy. Like you do it in ZBrush and it's technically digital, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's interesting. Technically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was a fun project. And then, so I enjoy doing a lot of stuff because of everything I'm doing. That's why I started my own webpage now and I'm doing workshops. Like, so this would be one of my workshops. Okay. Here, how would you make something for stop motion? Sculpt how would you corner. do that? So you're on it right now, sculptcorner.com. So I just started this. I just had my first class with the students last week. And I'm starting with what everyone asked me about is hard surfacing inside a ZBrush. Mm. So that's the first, first course. They're 14 weeks long. They're all live sessions and I record them all. And then you have, you can rewatch them as much as you want. Um, and then uh, we'll have critique days. I have a discord only for the students. And so the first one's going to be hard surface. The second one's going to be um, creating a collectible. So how would you do a collectible? How would you key that out? Learn about the printing, learn a little bit about some printing technology, yeah. like all that kind of stuff is what I want to do is show people, look, you can all 
build something from beginning to end. And I have a lot of other ones that I want to do. I want to do an illustration one. I want to do, I want to do one making your own model kit that you could turn around and sell and make money off of. How would you make your own model kit? Garage kits too, if you wanted to. So I got a bunch of ideas. So I just needed a, a platform to put it. Um, yeah. So I, so I just, the people kept asking, you should just put together. So I did it. I finally did it. It took me a long time to put together because I can only work on it from time to time here and there. Um, yeah. But now that it's up, I got the classes rolling out now because I've been teaching ZBrush for 10 plus years now too. You said you wanted to work for studios and now you're not just students for what you have, but you also you know, taught so many big artists in the industry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Like, uh, not like trying to get hired and then suddenly, suddenly like you're just, uh, every artist needs to come to Paul to learn more about ZBrush if they're working yeah. in a studio. It's, yeah, in some cases. Yeah, <laughs> I like to call it sometimes. The easiest way I can explain sometimes to people like, well, what do you do exactly? I'm like, I'm like, I'm the bat phone. Okay, so if there's a major problem in ZBrush, um, I get the call. Um, and then, you know, when ZBrush, you know, was still not as well known, I was the one flying around the world, sitting at studios, showing them what you could do with ZBrush. I'll never forget my very first studio visit. It was literally the first week I was at Pixel Logic. I had to go to Rhythm and Hughes, and they were working on Hulk, the first one. Do you still go to uh, mov uh, movie studios or mostly game these days? Uh, no, I went everywhere. Oh, okay. All right, go ahead. Like, I didn't want to cut you. Yeah. So, oh, I remember it because I had all, like, all I think was, I don't even remember now, 25 artists that were working on the film mm. in one room with me. And I'm showing them what they could do in ZBrush and the things that they could. And then they showed me the Hulk and said, hey, look, this is what we're doing with the Hulk. Do you have any suggestions or any tips? Maybe we can get more out of ZBrush with him and mm. stuff like that. And that was, you're talking like a weekend at my job, I want to say, maybe two weeks. Uh, and I was like, surreal. I have a lot of surreal moments in my career. I'm like, what am I doing here? Why am I sitting here right now? Uh, there's, there's so, but come on, Rick Baker did the foreword of my book. And I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> That's the Why thing. Why are you? <laughs> That's the thing, and man. then he came to my daughter's baby shower. We become really good friends. You know, uh, if I, he needs something with ZBrush, uh, he'll call me or hit me up, you know, and a lot of other, like a Steve Wang, I became really good friends with Brian Way, like a lot of people from that era that um, it's funny. Like I was just watching some of the documentaries on Netflix and some of the artists pop up that were now, I'm like, oh, I know, yeah, I know Pat. I know. And I'm reaching out and I'm like, God, that was so good to see you in the documentary. And they're like, hey, let's get together. And I'm like, this is so surreal as a kid that grew up on the stuff you were all making. I get to hang out with you guys now and have conversations with you. It's super awesome and surreal. And it's interesting. Um, it happens slowly, right? You don't understand hmm. it. And then you're in the moment. You're like, what's happening? Like, it, oh, it just did one. Of, yeah. Yeah. We <laughs> well, ZBrush won an Oscar, right? An Oscar yes. plaque. And I was at the Oscar dinner. Like, what's going on right now? <laughs> I'm literally at the Oscars dinner for science and technology. Um Okay. All right. <laughs> you don't you don't uh, know it, right? You, you're, when when you hear yeah. you're gonna go to Oscar, you're just getting ready and you go there, and then when it happens, you're like, what? What? What happened? Yeah, you're talking about a, a Canadian kid that grew up in Niagara Falls area, Buffalo area, <laughs> and awesome. now I'm sitting, you know, at doing things like that. I'm like, uh, it's pretty crazy. Teaching the artists that oh. you were dreaming to work with, and you're their teacher now. I love it. So now, now I'm a big toy guy because I do a lot of toy work as freelance work too from time to time. I worked on Star Wars, a bunch of IPs. And now that stuff is crazy to me too. Like I've gotten to work on Transformers, which I grew up on. I got to work on Jurassic World. I got some Jurassic Worlds. So I can show some of the stuff too yeah, that I've done um, here too. It's it's And then it's like crazy. Like I worked on like, here's some Star Wars. Here's one thing I did for Disney. I worked on the Star Wars piece. So this is mine. Oh, that's cool. 100% ZBrush, never oh, left it. Yeah, yeah. And they actually kept quite a bit. They Surprisingly, they didn't cut a lot of corners to keep the cost down. They kept mostly, like a lot of times when you get in toy production, they'll cut things. You know, I did stuff like this. These are fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did this one. And then uh, I did the Optimus and Megatron. Which is there's Megatron. <laughs> that's that's cool. These are really hard to find because they discontinued them. So why you didn't work for uh, in the game industry? Like 14 years, you're at Pixelogic, right? I mean, I yeah, that's pretty cool. 
So um, it's it's a good I job. Don't know. Once right? I got it, once I got once I got into Pixel Logic, I just started having a lot of fun talking to a lot of artists, developing the application, pushing pushing it. Um, I don't know. I just didn't never was like I don't need another job. I've been I'm loving what I'm doing. It's a lot of fun. Is to, it about the job or is it about what what you're doing on a daily basis? Is it like you have um, a job a and you're bit, making it, money? You know, it's a little bit of both. Um, because it go back, okay, if you're going to be in a, like a studio, right, you're going to work in a yeah. gaming, like, as you know, you'll work on one game maybe for years, yes. right? And then yes. you're, and then you're like, okay, we're going to redo this guy again. All right, for the fourth time, we're going to redo this guy. Okay. And so what's beautiful is, you know, today or tomorrow, I'll be talking to somebody, you know, like I said, I'm at UCLA with a cadaver. And then the next day I'm talking to a film artist. And the next day I'm talking to automotive it's it's all over the place and that's actually honestly why i like working in the toy industry too because i've gotten to work on all these ips i've gotten to work on the movie that literally put me in the inch jurassic park you know i got to work on jurassic world toys mm, like yeah, this is like a so surreal yeah. full circle moment and then i've worked on the millennium falcon i've worked on the x-wing i've worked on the tie fighters i'm like what the heck is happening to me right now kind of feeling and that's why I love the toy industry because I've, I've, I've done Ghostbusters for peace sakes. I've, I made the proton pack for their more of the recent toys. And like, is it mostly entertainment or, uh, you, you know, like you, you said, you, uh, Boeing is using it or do you guys uh, also like work for defense companies, gun companies, you know, military, things like that. Do they, do you know uh, they well, using? yeah, ZBrush is, yeah, ZBrush is used in those companies. Yes, wow. they, they are. It is. That's crazy, um, I've never done any work for them, but I've had plenty of conversations with people in those companies. Wow. Yes. That's where insane. it ZBrush is like, you'd be surprised how, where ZBrush is. It's in a lot of places, a lot of places. I wonder it's not, it, where it's going to go from here because game, uh, I think which, which industry is the most, um, like it's, it's the best, uh, or the biggest customer of ZBrush. Is it game industry? Or it's hard to say. Uh, I wouldn't know. We're a private company, so I don't. I don't oh. get the luxury of knowing all that stuff. Um, yeah, I see. So I, I couldn't tell you who our biggest client is. Yeah, because I'm only um, in the game industry, so I, I just yeah. know every company is using it. Without ZBrush, you can't do anything. Right, right. And then we've given free upgrades for whatever twenty something, twenty two years now. Let me ask you something. Um, actually, this is interesting. I don't know. You don't have to answer it, but uh, you know, do you, you know a lot of people have issues with zbrush interface right i'm used to it it's i don't a, want it it's i don't a want 50 it to 50 50 I'll, I'll be honest with you that honestly that is a 50 50 there's 50 people that come in, why don't you guys change this thing and then i've talked to people I'm like it's amazing for me this is what how i was able to get into the computer in the cg world right because we because zbrush is not just used by a gamer or a film person it's used by a an artist that worked in clay their whole life and now they want to sculpt something digitally they don't know what the word isoparm or topology or uvs are they're like what are you talking to are you speaking klingon i don't know what you're saying to me right now right so to them and all those types of artists or even like you take artists that do like scan data right or stuff like that they don't they don't know any of these stuff like the toy world they don't know anything about uvs as an example yeah yeah right so i've gone it. and have to show them how to use uvs and how you could use it in the toy companies yeah Right, or so details and stuff, right? Like when you use a surface noise in ZBrush, if you have UVs, you can right. control it and stuff. Yeah, there's there's a lot. Listen, there's so much things that you can do, and like I said, you can never stop growing it. You can never stop pushing the element. Yeah. So it's and and that's also a fun part about the job is trying to come up with innovative, different things and features that have never been seen done before. Let's face it, some of the stuff that we've done it was never thought of, you know, and, and then yeah. we did it. And then How they're like, you... whoa. What? So you, you said kind of... one thing, you said uh, people ask you, what do you do at, at Pixology, right? So you're an, you're technically, yeah. you're an artist, but you're also technical because you're developing mm -hmm. ZBrush, right? So what do you yeah. do exactly when you, when you work on ZBrush? Do you sit there and model the stuff and uh, experiment with it? Or you come with an idea and say, let's add this tool. You talk to both. Oh, uh, okay. Both. I'll come up with some feature ideas, throw it at the team. We discuss it and see if it's a good idea, where can we go, and then it grows into something. And then once we have something that we're working on, I got to sit there and actually use it as an artist and figure out, is it working correct? Is it? And then figure out, oh, man, if we need to add this 
to the feature. Like, let's, let's get, I'll give you one big story real quick is Spotlight. Okay. Um, we used to have a, we used to have a plugin that allowed you to bring in images and you just look at images. And I was talking to the head developer. I'm like, look, this thing's cool, but it's so limited on what we can do with it, right? And I really would love to be able to do da 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 I still remember the call to this day. And I'm like, well, what do you, he's like, and he, on that he's like, hold on a minute, just quiet for a second. I'm thinking about something. And he said, all right, I know what you're looking for. I know what you want. Let me call you back and then we'll discuss something. And I would say, I don't remember now the exact number of days. I would say it was, honestly, it was probably less than a week. And then he's like, hey, I got something for you. And he goes, here, try this. Is this what you were kind of thinking about looking for? I'm like, yes. And then that was it. That was the start of Spotlight. And then that was, and then it just ramped. And then you ramp up from there. You ramp up and you start using it and go, oh, man, we really need this in here, though. Can you can you get that? Can we put that in there in this in this version? Because, you know, you got also you got to juggle just like anything. You know, it's just like just when you're making a video game, you don't just get to put, OK, every single character is going to have 100,000 triangles. Let's do it. Let's go. Yay. It, it's yes. not going to work that way for everything too. When you're developing a piece of software, there's going to be, okay, we can go this route and it's going to take four months and X, how many X number of the people that use ZBrush are going to use this feature. Or we go this mount, it's going to take this way and it's going to take two months and everybody's going to use it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then that's the tough part. Sometimes you got to go, I think this is the, what's going to happen. I think this is the way people are going to go. And then here, here's some, sp- let's also look at what people would want and what people need. Um, and then figure that way. And how do you bring that all together to make your final output of the application? So there's a lot of, it's like any job. It's, there's challenges. It's interesting because uh, what you described is what I thought you're doing because it makes sense, right? You're the artist, mm-hmm. you know what you want as, as a tool or something. And then someone else is, developing those tools why zbrush is crashing many times <laughs> sometimes uh, that, yeah. I, that i couldn't answer there's a lot of reasons for it, it that could be just Com- multiple, computers. M- multiple latitudes like i've had i've had um i've had people like i had a situation where actually adobe reader was causing zbrush to crash wow that's it interesting conflict right it was, yeah, the, that program started pulling resources away from ZBrush, and then ZBrush went to pull resources. One time I had this issue, and I posted on Facebook. I was, like, so upset. And then you you messaged me and said, what's going on? Uh, what's the issue? And then you told me something I fixed. I think it was network or something. I fixed it, and it wasn't crashing anymore. So that's yeah, why I brought it, it up. Your, because- yeah, you said it was your, your network settings. Yeah. I've had hardware was- issues. Look, I've had people say it, it was stuff with hardware, and then they changed one piece of their hardware, and they're like, okay, stop. Like, well, then that was the problem. It wasn't, it wasn't the application. It was the hardware. Yeah. Was the problem. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's so many things that can cause a system to yeah. make a software crash. So yeah. it's a lot of stuff. I mean, it, regardless, then, there is, like it's, it's a life-changing software. It doesn't matter if you yeah. crash it. You know? Yeah, I'd say it definitely changed my life for sure. Yeah, same for me. Because I, I, yeah. I think about it. I used to model the stuff in Maya, but I mean, deep inside myself, I was a sculptor. Like I wanted to sculpt the stuff. When I was a kid, I was picking up whatever I could to just do something with it. A piece of wood trying to chisel away. I couldn't when I was a kid. I tried with mud. I was trying to paint. ZBrush was the one I was like, when I touch it, I was like, this is it. I know this is it. I can feel it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's sometimes as an instructor, I want to go, okay, let me show you guys how I used to, used to make a face. Uh, I used isoparms oh and lines. And then locked at it and see, did it look good or did it not look good? And then, all right, I got to change this point and try and moving around a point that's making lofted surfaces or you're dealing with so low, low polygonal points and trying to make it like, Box you didn't just grab a brush and go, yeah. yeah. So, but you know, but then that's the world we live in today. There's, it's, there's so many ways to, to sculpt uh, digitally now. You know what's sad? So we had to like what 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 you say is actually interesting because before ZBrush we had to, you know, like w- work with poly modeling, uh, edge extrudes, uh, different methods of making characters and moving each vertices. It was it was hard, right? It wasn't easy to 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 work with it and try to come up with something nice. But now uh, ZBrush is making it so easy. People that are using ZBrush today they don't know how hard it was to make a character fifteen years ago before ZBrush, sixteen years ago. Yeah, and they take it yeah. for granted, you know. So I I see sometimes someone is like posting, "What is this software? I'm trying to work with it. The interface is bad." I'm like, "Dude, 
Have you tried to do polymodeling before? No. I mean, this is not, it's not painful. It's actually making your life a lot easier. You know what I mean? And uh, we're, we're, just, we're becoming the old people go back in my day. <laughs> yes, back in. back in my day. I went to school uphill in the snow and came home uphill with four more feet of snow. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Every generation has that story, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, like look at what I said. Like, look at my first computer. It's a joke. Yeah, like our phones are better than my first computer. <laughs> oh, com- so. oh, of course. Yeah, it's better than yeah. Apollo 11. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Crazy. Like my first phone, uh, my first computer was, I think, thirty-two meg of RAM, four gig of hard drive. Oh well, yeah, well, just look the original IBMs and stuff. They took them an entire room. Yes, like yeah, massive okay. room, <laughs> that's and that's crazy. why computers didn't really start taking off until the eighties, because then they finally got the technology down, small and powerful. You know, people also don't know a lot of the Windows machines in the beginning were actually Apple motherboards because bill gates was buying steve jobs apple and steve uh, uh wozniak's um motherboard to put in the machines to run windows wow that's crazy so it's oh, crazy things change, things change yeah. a lot uh, um yeah yeah it's insane I, and we take it for granted easily honestly like people forget about it so fast yeah but we're artists and when we want something we want it to work and we want to yeah, get to our yeah. point a to z we just want it to happen right because then we're in the process work. of being artistic and yeah, we want and that stay in that headspace it's much easier now look i mean uh when i showed you my work the one that got uh top row in, on zebra central it was so hard mm-hmm. to render it to to do whatever and just prepare an image as an artist i don't want to deal with all of those craziness you know i just want to f- focus on the visuals and make something and post it that's it now it's yeah. much easier. You just uh, you don't even have to worry about textures because you can get a scan, trans- transfer the texture, use texture right. XYZ or whatever different applications, and then draw on top of it, and you know just right. put it Which in. Then t- pe- people, yeah. Then then people our age would go. I used to have to sculpt those skins, <laughs> that <laughs> yes. skin detail the skin texture. Boards. Now you guys are just grabbing images and click and dragging. <laughs> yeah. You don't Arr. need it. <laughs> You don't need it anymore. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just it's, and it's never going to. And that's why I'm saying what we started with this. You look five years ago, what was look 10 years ago, what the technology was. Think now, 10 years from now, how crazy it's going to be for us. Probably you talk about 3D printers. I have three 3D printers in my household right now. The printing is just getting faster, cheaper, better quality. So it's, it's an, it's a no brainer. At some point, almost every artist that does, 3D is probably going to own a 3D printer at some point in their life. It's like Amazon, right? You have to use Amazon these days. You can't just ignore Amazon anymore. You have you to have well, a yeah, smartphone. Be, it's tough. You can, but it'd be tough. It would yeah, be, it's going to be tough. <laughs> we're, we're now people that like convenience. It's convenient. It's sitting on my phone on my couch, order something, and it gets dropped off at my house in two days. Netflix. Right? So, yeah, or Netflix. You can't live yeah, without Netflix. Yeah. There's no yeah, way. All the streaming services. Yeah. I want it now. Yeah, exactly. It's faster and faster, yeah. which is actually bad for uh, society because people don't want to go out. Everyone is getting lazy. It's going to damage society at, at some point that, that if some disaster happens, people people cannot survive, I think. Not like before, you know. If you well, Come on, look at the metaverse. We're literally building a world of a world, but digitally doing it. Like we could go fly to Croatia or I'll just put my Oculus on and go digitally to Croatia and sit on my couch. Or like, like the metaverse, there's companies buying up squares of metaverse and literally putting a virtual digital shop that you can go to and buy things instead of just actually going to the shop and buying it. That's the next right? uh, so, future. Um, yeah. You know, you know how YouTube and Instagram grew? How game industry grew fast? I think metaverse is the next one. So whoever jumps in fast uh, is going to be a winner. Yeah, there's already spots selling for millions of dollars that companies are buying, like little, in essence, plots of land in the metaverse for millions of dollars. That's crazy. And then they own that. And then, then it's like what you just said, NFT. Why well, own it? If you, I want to sell it, oh, you want it? And if metaverse gets big enough, okay, it's 10 million now. What do you I bought it for a million. What do you think about NFTs? Million. Um. Okay, I what I like about NFTs is the first time ever I think we have something as a digital artist that protects us, and we also then, i.e., can make money off it. Because as a digital artist, there 
let's be honest, there's a lot of really good digital artists that are just do some amazing work. The problem's always been in order for them to show their work, they got to put it up somewhere. And it's just so easy, right click, download, print. That's it. And then the artist made no money at all, right? So that's what I like about NFTs. It gives capabilities for artists to protect themselves and make some extra money, you know, have another revenue stream of money coming in. Because let's also face it, you know, we're not starving artists like they were in the Renaissance necessarily, but we don't like artists don't get paid what they should get paid in a lot of industries oh, in man. certain situations as well. I, I think part of it is the artists are making mistakes on that, honestly. Like if I be uh, like transparent about it. It's not just the industry because when I talk to artists, mostly no one really talks about the financial uh, side or trying to learn. It's just, it's just about the art. I want to learn art and I want to be the best at it. I don't care about mm -hmm. the money side. And they get global all the time. You know, the, when you go into a business, business cares about uh, revenue and net income. That's their what they bottom want. line. They're going yeah, yeah, exactly. to keep the doors open. They got to keep yeah. the doors open. Exactly. So, so if someone says, I'm okay, pay me whatever. I actually heard an artist saying, I don't care about the salary. I just want to work here. And he didn't, he didn't get a raise. I mean, come on. Yeah, what, what can you expect? Part of it yeah. is what we do. We, we are attacking uh -huh. ourselves, you know, or working right. over time, 15 hours and not complaining, always yep. saying yes, always accepting anything yep. that comes our way. Because, because we're, scared of, we're scared of losing the job. We're scared yeah, of losing the position. Yeah, we're scared exactly. of losing the capability to work on that, right? Exactly. You take, you know, like I said, I got to work on some Star Wars stuff. I got to work on Dress Up World. Uh, I think you, you segue into a good point here as a freelance artist as well. Yeah. I will say this. You got to be careful because what you're doing is setting the precedent in that part type of the industry. You're saying if you're willing to work on something for say $500 or thousand dollars, which you really, you should be charging $5,000. What you've now done is knock everybody else down. And that's also what happened in the industry what was it, 10 years ago when Rhythm and Hughes had to shut down? What happened was they had to keep making lower bids and lower bids and lower bids to compete about someone that opened up another little studio and then they're underbidding them. But then now they're like, well, in order for us to get jobs, we got to come down to their dollar amount. But we're bigger. We have more employees. We have more things. And now we can't afford to stay open, right? So you that's that's what I'm saying. So if you're a freelancer and you're willing to do something for 500 bucks or 200 and and I get it. There's other people around the world too. You got to take that in context too. There's people in other parts of the world that $500 is a lot of money. $1,000 is a lot of money. But then the problem is now that's it. You're in that pool now. And if you are getting to the point where like, look, I've been doing this for whatever. Let's say you're an artist. I've been doing this for five years and I'm not making any more money. I'm still making the same one. And now I'm more prolific at it. I'm faster at it. I can kick out even more models for them. Why am I not getting paid more? It's becoming it's because less you payment. Put yourself, you, you put yourself in that, um, you put yourself in the corner with baby. There's no more Patrick Swayze to come save us, right? And so you're going to knock me down now or anybody, other freelancers got to compete possibly and say, well, they'll come back. And then they, I know this. So they come back, well, I can get this artist to do it for this much. I'm like, well, then fine. That's cool then. that, And it's not like their work's necessarily going to be bad they're and that's the thing too a lot of these artists are so good and better than me making they're less making money. money yeah it's, it's discouraging yeah. Which, to be honest it's tough it's it's hard to juggle it's hard to understand and i still get people ask me paul oh, what should, what do you think i should charge for this and i'm like oh man yeah like, man that's i always break it down i always break it down everybody go this way what do you want to make an hour like what are you comfortable with making an hour okay start there if it's 40 bucks 50 bucks 60 bucks 100 bucks an hour whatever it is an hour Okay, start there. Now look at what they're giving you that they want you to make. How many hours do you think it's going to take for you to make that realistic? You know how fast you work as an artist. You know the piece. So, okay, now do, let's say eight hours times 50 bucks an hour. There's your base. That's your baseline that you're willing to go nothing lower than that. But that's not what you send them because you know there are going to be things like, hey, we need you to touch up this. We need to fix this. We need, there's always a back and forth. Art, art is a creative growing process, not just for you as the artist, but who your art director is, things will change. So you got to calculate that in and then add a little bit of buffer so you can make a little bit more money than the bare minimum bones making money. Like there's not any point in making money that just only pays my bills. And then I got $0 in my bank account. I will pay your bills and start padding your bank account a little bit for emergencies and things like that. Um, so that's what I always tell people, like, look at what you're willing to work an hour. 
How long is it going to take you? Okay, now add 10 hours for back and forth, something like that, or 12 hours. 20%. And then add a little bit usually. extra. And don't be, don't be scared. To, if, yeah. if you were good enough for them to come to you and go, hey, we want to hire you for this job, that means you're good enough. That means right yes. then, yes. you're a good enough artist if they're willing to email you and say, I love what you're doing. I have this job. Are you willing to work on it? That means you're good enough, period. There you go. You're good enough. You just sold them already. So don't sell yourself short, put it up there and go to it and, you know, be the highest bidder. You, you might, you might be surprised. They might go, okay, cool. I'll give you that much. No problem. I've had that a couple of times where I'm like, oh, I'm going to charge them this. And I'm like, we'll see what they come back with. The problem want to negotiate with me. And I've had a couple that didn't negotiate at all. I'm like, they're like, okay, that's fair price. We'll do it. I'm you like, know, it's very perfect. simple. People think uh, all of these jobs are just, you know, they know. So many people they have like depends. Some companies have a lot of backlogs of uh, people that are applying for that job, oh, yeah. but it's but they're not necessarily all all good. Like ninety nine point nine percent of them are not ready to work in the industry, any industry. It's just like a pile of portfolio. They don't know where they are. They're looking for a job, right? And then the yeah. the person who is good at it uh, is scared to to ask for more because they're like, what if I don't get hired? Okay, so you don't get hired, you lose it. You learn from it, next job, next company, you, you just know exactly, you just change it again. That's what happened to me. I was in Dubai and I was like asking for a certain amount and, uh, you know, I was getting rejected. And eventually I figured out my price, I figured out a way and it worked. And then from there, I, I started charging more and more and more. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and you know what I learned? It's better to have one or two, if you're working freelance, one or two companies that are paying you what you deserve, what makes you happy as a person because you're going to perform 10 times better. You're going to be much, much more confident. You're not going to just have excuses for the work you do. Things are mm. going to change. It's, it's better than having two good clients that are paying you what you deserve than having 20 clients paying you one third of what you want. And every day you wake up, oh, I have to do this job again. I have to do this crappy work. And yeah, their art is bad. Comes, art, goes, yeah. The list goes on and on. It all comes back to the peace of mind as a person. You're, you get in your head. Then you get like a little depressed and then you're just not into the projects anymore. And that's also the worst thing when you get a project and it's a lot of back and forth, like more than what should be happening. And then you're barely making any money. And then if you break that down, that's what I always tell people. Okay. If you're going to take a job, let's say for $500. Okay. As an example. And then you're like, okay, it should only take me about five hours to do this job. Right. But then let's say that job ends up being 20 hours because there's so much back and forth. Now do what you just made an hour. Like, do that math 20 into 500 you're not making your hourly wage anymore you're making half of it and you're just a quarter of it obviously and then what what did you and you only made 500 dollars on it and what did you get out of it and then and and some things you can't and unfortunately the way the world turns to some of the stuff that you do you can't i got stuff i can't even share for me there's people that have no idea that i've done a ton of toy i've been working in the toy industry now for eight plus years almost nine years and a lot of people have no idea like all the toy stuff that I have done. Um, people are like, well, I thought you just worked at Pixel Logic. My mom yeah, still has no idea what I do for a living. And I've given up explaining. <laughs> yeah, same with me. <laughs> I think for the first five years, Pixel Logic kept thinking I worked at Pixar. I don't know. I'm like, I don't work at Pixar. <laughs> I'm like, I've been there. I've been to the studio and I've sat with the directors and trained that, but I'm, I don't work there. I've never worked on anything there. I'm just, just like, wait, I don't understand. What do you do? I'm like, just forget it. <laughs> I make money. And it's the same That's thing when I I'm do. talking to somebody that doesn't understand our industry, understand trying to teach, tell them what ZBrush is. I just go, look, it's like I'm a ball of clay on a computer and you're using a computer instead of using your hands in hand with a clay in your hand. It's just having that, your digital ball, turn it into whatever you want, whatever you want to make. Look around something in the room right now. We can make it in ZBrush. That's it. That's what I can do. Yeah, That's it's hard it to is. explain. But yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, uh, one thing I wanted to mention, actually, the the lack of confidence when it comes to the money uh is actually causing prices to go down like uh to 10 2011 12 i was charging like 400 dollars a day to that at the time you know to to do freelance work and stuff and now people are charging less than that i'm like why this is like 12 years later why everything is more expensive you know everything is like 50 sure. 60 70 percent more expensive why are but, you going uh, but cheaper? i think but i think that's another one of the things i said that's a technology thing Technology yeah. has advanced so much that an artist can in other parts of the world where, right, they, 
they can't get the benefits that we have walking outside and going to a grocery store isn't as convenient for them as it is for us. Like we, we don't, we don't realize how good we have it in countries like U S and Canada and in Europe, countries like France and Germany and things like those other parts of the world. Like, they're just like, look, I can't even afford to put food on my plate. And you want me to buy a piece of software. That's a thousand dollars. You want to buy a piece of software that's $500. This is why they convert and go to use a, a crack version of any piece of software instead. Because so I think that's part of it is you can have an artist now that's working in other parts of Brazil or Argentina or something like that. And they'll do something. And like I said, thousand dollars in Brazil or Argentina or something like that, depending on what part of their countries possibly that they're in, or like you said, Iran or Iraq or any one of those are like, that's a lot of money. And to them, they're like, I don't need any more money. I'm like, I, if I can get one of these jobs a month, I'm living a pretty good life in my country now, in my world or where I live in parts of the world, wherever it's you are. It's not going to stay like that forever. At some point, it's going to collapse. No, but you but know? I get it. But I get that's why yeah. it happens. And I understand it. And it makes sense. Uh, I've just, I've I've gotten to the point where I'm like, look, if I'm, if I'm not the right person for the job or AE, I'm just a little too expensive, then, then I'm not, I'm not it. So then definitely give it to another person in school. And then it, another one will come around for me and I'll make it. I, it goes back to, again, if I was good enough for them to reach out to me, to want to hire me, I am good enough then to do any job that they come to period. That's the line in the sand. You didn't go to them. They came to you. So you now have to understand you've got some power here. And have confidence in yourself as an artist and your capabilities and what you can do. And like that Star Wars one I I showed, I had two weeks to work on that. That's it. That's on top of working at Pixelogic, teaching at Noman, teaching at Art Center at that time. I was teaching three nights. I was teaching one night at Noman, two nights at Art Center, working at Pixelogic full time, and then working on that, that for two. That's it. I got two weeks to do that entire project. That's not a lot of time. And it's, it's got to be an exact replica of replica of the movie, right? So the movie's not even out yet. So they're giving, I think they have to give me obviously images from the movie set and all that, but it's got to be exact replica, right? And then I believe, I'm not sure, but I think that even at that time, the, all that stuff, Hasbro and Disney had to send it all the way up to like Kathleen Kennedy to get the sign off. So. Mm, interesting. Right. So, and then that's also where you have a lot of back and forth. And that is one of the very few projects. Ironically, I had no back and forth at all. I sent them the final and they said, that's We're it. Good. That's it. Yeah. You're good. I'm like, Oh, I know. But then that also, <laughs> that also taught me my plateau and what I could do in two weeks on top of other things that I'm doing. So that made me have an understanding when I get another job, oh, I did that in two weeks on top of everything else I was doing, looking at the job. Okay, I, I, that took me X amount of hours to do now. So I'm looking now at this transformer now. Okay, I think it'd take me this many hours, but here's my bid to do it. And Done. you become more confident about it because you said when they come to you, the other way is um, you apply for a job, if they want to talk to you, if they show interest, it's obvious that they're showing interest. And uh, yeah. just because you apply doesn't mean you have to charge less to get the job. If you don't get this one, there's always next one. And the industry is growing fast, man. Like there are so many studios and companies. Like if you search character artist job on Google, I'm pretty sure a lot of them will pop out. Like it's just oh, yeah. insane. I, yeah, I have a student that's in my sculpt corner. He's a toy guy. I think he's. I think he said he worked at Mattel for like twelve years or something like that. He's working yeah. at a toy company I've never even heard of. That's oh. literally almost right down the street from my house. I'm like, I've never heard of this place. That's crazy. And he said, "Yeah, it's tons of fun, man." And I'm like, "All right, that's awesome." I'm like, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> there's so many like that. Yeah, it's, there's and there's just, a shortage. There's a shortage uh, yeah. nowadays. Me, if I was trying to get. Yeah, me, if I was trying to get back into it, I probably if I was a young buck again at 21. I'd be going, actually, that's what I was trying to do, going in actually not to a major studio, but a smaller studio, because then you're going to be required to do a lot more, which means you're going to learn a lot faster because you're going to do more of the pipeline at a small studio than a large studio. A large studio, you're going to do one pocket of like a mini school because there's more artists doing other things, right? You might be at a small studio where you get to do characters, but then you got to go do an environment piece. Then you got to do some, you know, vehicles, and then you got to do some props. So you're learning all that stuff. 
in a small studio. And then that's when you can jump off and go to a bigger studio and then hone in on what you want to hone in on. So that's a way to go in it too, instead of just going straight to a large studio that maybe is your dream studio. Yeah. Two things actually. So uh, you wanted to say a story. I think you forgot, or I don't know if you talked about it. Oh yeah. So that when I was going, trying to get into the, in the industry, uh-huh. the number one thing that, and I would still, this is to this day you want to do. The number one person I actually looked for was not the artists, not the directors, not the supervisors. Who is the actual HR person that yes. does the hiring, that calls the artist and says, hey, we want you to do an art test or blah, blah, blah. Who is that? That's the person I want to talk to. And it, I was going during the heyday of EA, right, where they were just blowing up massive, like Madden football and everything. Yeah. And I remember I met that guy. He's like, dude, I get like, I don't even remember the number. It's something silly, like 40, 50 VHS tapes a day. Right. <laughs> so he was like, look, you want to get me in the morning. Okay. Because by the time I'm done sitting there watching and then it's lunchtime, I now have lunchtime hangover where I'm, I'm getting tired from lunch. And then now I'm at the end of the day where I'm like, I'm just tired of looking at these videos. So I'm just popping them in real fast. I'm looking at 10, 15 seconds. If you're not keeping my attention, you're out. I don't even bother. Right. Yeah. So I remember a story he told me I had have these, he said, I'd always have these stack on my desk of VHS tapes. He said, I remember this one kid that I got in the morning and had all my normal stack. And then I had this red silicone, this red wrapping on my desk. I'm like, what? And he was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. And he opened it up and it was someone's demo reel. And what they had done is they made it look like a sub and they unwrapped it. And um, the sandwich was like the VHS tape. The napkin, he said, was like the person's resume. Mm-hmm. And he said, and he said, what tape do you think I started with that day? I started with that tape. He goes, that's one part of it. The artist also had to be good enough for our studio. Like, but that at least you got me when you want me to look at your work. Right. Yeah. So I think that goes now to today's world. You're trying to get a job in the industry. I think it is beneficial to speak to some artists that can maybe help that they really like you and they know your artwork. They then can go to that HR person and go, Hey, look, dude, you got to hire this person. He or she is amazing. We're, we're silly not to grab this artist. So reach out to this artist for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of feel like the industry is like more about connections these days. And it makes sense because uh, it's not an easy job, you know. If uh, I mean, no. it, 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 it's probably changing now because of the shortages and the growth. It's growing crazy fast. And uh, I don't think it, I don't think there, there are enough people to cover the, the growth, basically. You know, more more character artists, and now even character artists, not just you are a character artist and you, you do everything. You do the high res, someone else does the low res, someone else is texturing, someone else is doing yeah. the hair. Or just, you're, you're you're only doing the heads, you're not doing any of the body, or you're only doing the gear, you're only doing the gear for the character, you're not doing anything on the character but the gear, right? Yeah, there's all that. Well, hence back why I said sometimes it's beneficial to go to a smaller studio because you're doing the whole character. Then you're doing the gear, you're doing the entire character, the clothing, the head, everything. Do everything. That's what I learned. Yeah. You know, I, I learned to to work with hard surface and then I bec- I became a character artist. I was doing cars, you know, modeling cars in Maya at first. And I'm, just- I'm till this day, I'm telling you right now, hard surface is a great way to get in the industry because there's look at go on ArtStation or any website. Majority of it's organic character work. Yeah, look how much hard wants to become a character the, artist. The, the, yeah, the difference is here, here. So that means your pool of competition is smaller in the hard surface world than the inorganic world. So if you can get a good at hard surface, it's the same thing, character artist versus environment artist. Uh, there's definitely more people that want to do character artwork than environment artwork, right? So if you go down the environment artwork world, you have less competition. Hence, you have a greater chance of getting a job because there's just less people to compete against. But if that's not where your passion is, you shouldn't just switch to that if you're not passionate about doing that pipeline, then you got to go for it. Go If you're going to go for character, go for it. Put those hours in, work hard. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the you said about hard surface. Uh, the, the good thing about hard surface is you're not limited to character art. You can design stuff. Yeah. You can design stuff for uh, car companies, defense yeah. companies, Boeing, you know. It, uh, it, it opens up. Look yeah, in your room doors. right now. Yeah, look in your room how many pieces of product actually are hard surface. Yeah. I look at my room now. I've got monitors. I've got lights. I've got 3D printer. It's all hard surface. It's not yeah. organic. Yeah. Right. Microphones, cameras, my swell bottle. Right. It's all, this <laughs> yes. is hard surface. It's a design. It's organic. Yeah. They have to do it in 3D. Yeah, it's designing hard surface. Yeah. It's not, it's not, uh, 
so yeah, it, it's more practical to to make money. And I think they get paid well. Like if you work as a designer, hard surface designer, you, you can make yeah. more money than a character artist, as far as I know. So, I mean, with that, I wanted to ask you something. Where do you think the industry is going? Like moving forward, how do you, like, what do you see? I have my own vision. I want to see without influencing you to feel like. What, uh, uh, what industry are you referring to? Like gaming or? Gaming in general, like for, let's say for character artists or for artists yeah. in, in general, because uh, industry is changing big right i mean it, a lot of yeah. things are changing the workflows are changing yeah. you know z modeler changed a lot of things or z remesher also changed a lot of things there there might be applications in the future you won't have to like in the past you had to paint a lot of textures by hand with with substance painter it's yeah. so easy you can you're in photoshop you, you're in photoshop yeah. painting yeah flat yeah face. exactly so yeah. it's like the, the need is changing, right? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I have to like do any anything topology related for, I don't know if I'm going to work in the industry five years from now. What do I do? You know, that's, well, that, that's the beauty about the toy world. I don't ever have to worry about topology because it's going to get decimated anyways. Um, no, I think the industry is changing. Yeah, and that goes back again, technology. L look at what Unreal 5 is doing for everybody as an example, right? Now people can literally take their 20 million polygon mesh from ZBrush, plop it right into the engine, and you still got great gameplay. I don't have to worry about my maps, low, a low res, a high res. I personally feel in my lifetime, we are going to personally see a little bit of the end of game ready meshes. I don't think it'll 100% go away because you got to use tricks to just keep the game good and flowing. But there's going to be less and less and less. And I can say that because when I started in the game industry, you were literally using, it was mostly driven by textures and sprites and alphas. It wasn't even the model. The model, if you took all that off, the model looked ridiculous. Yeah. And I'm talking like PlayStation, PlayStation 2 models. It didn't look great. No. It was, it was all the boxes. texturing yeah. and everything, right? Yeah. So look at now what we're doing. What do you think? It's going to keep growing, 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 growing. And if you think Unreal is the only one that's going to keep pushing that element, that's crazy. They're all going to keep pushing that element. And... I don't think it'll ever die, but I think it's going to come. And I already seen situations where people are like, even you said, I've, I've seen artists that have literally taken, Hey Paul, I took the Z remesher model, plopped into the engine. We were good to go. I didn't yeah, do any remodeling. You don't, you don't need to good. worry about it. I didn't have to touch it. Yeah. And it was low enough poly. And you can put exact numbers in, in decimation yes, master yes. too. And people were like, I decimated down to the exact number of triangles. They said I was loud. We threw in the engine. It looked great. I didn't have to do anything. We're done. No re topologizing. It's already happening. So I see that shift and then what Unreal 5 has done may push that shift, I think, faster now. Um, and then it's the same thing in the film industries. There's things that they're doing in the film industry that completely different than they did five years ago, 10 years ago. And that's just going to keep evolving. And in all in, in every industry I'm working in and seeing, yeah, I, I think I see where certain workflows are becoming less and less and less relevant. And it's, it's, I think it's also, we're at a point now, the beauty part of where we're at now, especially for those that are trying to get in the industry, it's no longer all, all just about the piece of software you use. It's now becoming more about the artist and That's how good true. you are and the quality of work you can kick out and the amount of time it takes you. That's a big caveat too. It's not just about the quality. It's, hey, did that take you six months to do or did that take you three months to do? Because you only get three months here at this studio. You're not going to get six months to make that, right? So and then you see that because now you go to studios, they're not just, okay, you're only going to use 3D Studio Max here and that's it. If you don't know 3D Studio Max, don't bother applying. Yeah, like that's what it was when I was applying. Yeah. Like if you don't know Maya, don't apply. Well, ZBrush, don't even you have to know. You're not going to get hired. ZBrush, you have to know ZBrush. If you don't know ZBrush, yeah. you're not going to get hired. <laughs> there, well, there sure. are situations. There are situations like, yeah. But then same thing. Well, if you go to a gaming studio, they're not going to hire you if you don't know Substance. Oh, uh, yeah, too. yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Like there's it's certain like, programs that you still... You got to know yes. to get in, in there too, right? But I see a lot of studios and they're like, oh, I got I got this artist working in Mass. I got this artist working in Maya. I got this artist working in Moto. They're using ZBrush across the board. They're using this and that. I don't care as long as we can fit it in the industry, our pipeline. And it, the end result is what I care about. How good is that result? And are we staying on schedule to what I need the schedule to be? So I think that's what's changed the most now, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, and then I'd also say the flip of that is what I like to call now 3D concept artists that are just using ZBrush now to do concepting. And there's a mixture now where there's still the 2D work being done, which is beautiful, amazing work, but there's now a pocket of artists that are just using ZBrush to make concepts. 
And then they can change the angles, re-render, do all this. And then there's a lot of really good 2D artists, concept artists that have embraced ZBrush and they're using ZBrush to do that kind of blocky out stuff. And then they're throwing it into Painter and Photoshop and doing using their talents that they're amazing at to do that. Like Mike Thompson is one of the artists that, that guy's oh, yeah. an amazing, like, crazy. amazing yeah. drawer, amazing painter. And he just picked ZBrush up, I don't even remember, like five, six years ago. Yeah, he's and now very he, good at it. Yeah, I'm most of his sure. stuff now is ZBrush. And then he throws it in a painter and then he has this amazing talent painting. And if you but, look at his work, you'd be like, there's no way that's 3D. But it I is. I interviewed him as well, actually. I was yeah, there you go. Here, so yeah, can watch. like, and he's only been using, Z I don't know how long now. I want to say five years, maybe six years. It might be longer than that now. Maybe, it's, Mike, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I don't remember the number of years you said. But this is a prime example of an artist that has a 2D background, amazing painter, amazing drawer. And look, Neville Page also was amazing. Oh, man. Pencil yeah, artist. Neville Page. His pencil artwork is freaking amazing. And it's because he's a good designer. He's a designer. Yeah, Neville Page is just, yeah. I yeah. Mean, and he's worked on crazy stuff. He's worked on hockey helmets. He's worked on wheelchairs in his career, like stuff like that. And now he's obviously one of the big guys in the film industry. But yes, in his career, he's worked on some crazy fun stuff, you know? And I think that's yeah. also you got to be understanding that you're not going to always work on maybe something that you were super like thought you were going to work on, but maybe you'll like it even more. I know there's people that are like, oh, I want to be a character artist. And then they start doing these projects. And they're like, this is actually more fun. I like doing this kind of stuff more than being a character artist. You know, you so. know I, everything you said, I agree with it because I, I feel like um, my, 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 my observation is uh, consoles will die eventually because of uh, cloud computing and cloud uh, yeah. storage and all that. Yeah. You know, Amazon yeah. came, out with, came out with Amazon Luna. Uh, they don't have a lot of a big library yet, but I tried, uh, one, um, I think it was um, Metro and it was smooth with the best graphic. Like it was just higher settings. I could play it on my phone. I could play it on TV, on anything I, I wanted to. And it looked great. So imagine if you mix this, you don't have the hardware issues anymore because of that. Uh, it's going to be like more like bandwidth issues with the internet, which is, I mean, it's fairly good actually. I have a one gig internet now. Oh, really? It's pretty fast. Yeah, it's it's pretty nice. very fast. I know, it depends on what I mean, how they are doing in other states. But uh, but imagine, my my feeling is like, uh, when you don't have the power uh, limitations, like you can play the fastest, like the best graphics, mm -hmm. two hundred mm -hmm. frames per second or whatever. Yeah. So that 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 fixes the graphics, uh, you know, calculation issues. So that means like, Look, yeah, adding the engines like Unreal Engine, you know, Unreal Engine mm -hmm. Five is is a game changer. And I was telling my students, I think it's gonna cause a lot of pain for so many companies because now they have to change their whole whole pipeline or change their uh, in house engine to something that can compete with Unreal Engine. It's not easy. Yeah. They 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 spend time like this is what they do Unreal Engine, right? They spend yeah. so much time to develop that that engine, and it's still coming next yeah. year. So imagine how, what kind of a shift that's going to add to the industry, and then with sure. internet and cloud computing, all that. Yeah. It's been part of my job. What you're saying is part of my job too. It picks the logic, right? I'm trying to come up with features that can change the industries, right? That's part of my job, yeah. is coming up with something that no one ever thought thought of that you could do in a computer. That's part of what we've done at Pixel Logic for 24 years. That's so. insane. But yeah, so you see how it's like changing. Mm -hmm. So when I look at it, I'm, I, I think for artists, this is my observation. I'm, I'm, I'm like, what do I want to do five years from now? I don't have to go into the industry. Like I'm, I'm already working in the industry, so I'll find my way. But I'm like, if I was new, I would actually think five years from now and then focus on my art instead of worrying about, uh, you know, how many polygons I have on this character. Is the hair high risk enough? Do I have to make hair and... Uh, I don't think any of that would matter. I, I I don't know if they can fix the cloth simulation anytime soon, but you know a lot of the things like armor modeling, which is majority of the games is about armor, hard surface, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so imagine like as an artist, I feel like doing um, you know really good concept designs in ZBrush, high quality of stuff that you can use to generate the game mesh. Um, and I think it's going to become automatic. Like the lowers will be like, okay, I'm going to do it in five minutes or I'm just going to give it to someone else to do it. Or you just put it in the engine because it works, you know, yeah. it's, it's so, uh, like unreal engine five right. or maybe unreal engine six. You can, 
I, I know that I know for organic stuff, it's not the same because of the deformation yeah. and things like that. But I'm pretty sure they will find us. No, I, I think they'll be a, they'll figure it. They're going to figure it out. It's going to get figured out. It's going to. Come on, they're giving the Apex giving grants everywhere. That's how, that's part of why they're giving grants to push, keep pushing them and the technology. Yes. It all comes back yes. down to the technology. And that, when I say technology, it's not just hardware, it's software too. And what's happening yeah, on software, both those exactly. fronts. Sometimes the software can only do as good as the hardware can give it, right? And vice versa. Yeah. yeah. So there's all that. It's going to keep growing. Come on, look at our cell phones. It's insane what we can do on our cell phones. Oh, I guess that's it. I don't know if you want to say anything. Yeah, else you know, one of the things I want to say, obviously, we're having a great conversation here. I'm just one person, yes. you know, you should, whoever's listening to this, go listen to a bunch of people's artists, a bunch of opinions and listen, go to shows, meet people, get out there, right? This is just my experiences and my opinion in some cases, some of the stuff too. Um, but that's part of your journey as an artist, I think, finding things out. And it's part of what my journey has been for the last whatever number of years now that I've been an artist is discovering things, trying things, experimenting. And that's also what I've done in ZBrush for a lot of my career is ex experimenting. I got to learn that application and any other application I've taught myself by experimenting and messing up, figuring out what worked and what didn't work, and then then embracing those pipelines, those workflows. So I would encourage everybody, you know, to get as much information from anywhere that you can, especially with like we were just talking about. We got YouTube, this podcast. You know, there's so many ways to learn about stuff. You know, let's, I say yeah. embrace it as much as you can. And when we get back to normal life, I always tell my students, especially in LA, I'm like, you live in LA almost every weekend. There's probably some conference you can go to that's artistic related. And you probably learn a lot. And you never know. You could be standing next to your next boss that you start having a conversation with. And they're like, Hey, look, I got a position open. Do you want it? Right. So yeah, get out there. So if you, if you say, what is the number one place they should go to? If they want to go to a seminar or something, if they have only one option, they can't go to all of them. Which one is the number oh, one? Oh, that's a tough about? one. You know, for like finding a job, you mean? In general, like, uh, like imagine like someone is a student, doesn't know what to do or is already good, a good artist, but still trying yeah. to figure out what that's I want tough. To do. I like don't know. SIGGRAPH used to be it. it used to be period. You go to SIGGRAPH. But not anymore, there. right? But it's not, SIGGRAPH is not what it used to be because, you know, and also with everything that's yeah. changed over the years, it's not what it used to be. Um, I say sometimes it's good to go to some of the small ones. Um, I've been really, like, I only went to the first one. They only had one. They, the last two have been digital. Lightbox was really impressive because there are just tons of different types of oh. artists. Um, Monster Palooza is really good. It's a smaller type of conference, but it's all like creatures, sci-fi, horror stuff. But then you meet like artists. It's more of like artistic feel to it conferences like that design con was really good for that too another nice conference that and all those are out here in la area obviously zebra summit is a great place to yes. go to <laughs> i never been to zebra summit that's yeah. crazy yeah that's a great one to go to of course <laughs> as well to uh take away but it's tough that's what i would say too and then i would say and i all honestly it's not i wouldn't focus on maybe it's the same thing online don't I wouldn't the more yeah. places you put your artwork, you never know. Like some people, like if you go to ArtStation, ArtStation is one of the biggest websites in the world. Forget just what we do. It's one of the most top 100 visited websites in the entire world. Right. So what that means as an artist, you put your artwork up there. What happens? There's thousands of people in that day. And then your work's getting sometimes it might be better to put it on something like Zebra Central because there's not as much traffic, but it's not like there's not a little bit of traffic. And I can tell you from experience, talking to people that hire, they still, hey, morning coffee, I sit there, I go on Zebra Central, then I go to Art Station, I see if there's any new artists, I see if there's anybody good out there, and then I contact the artists and say, hey, I really love what you just put up. So sometimes it's also good to put it in more than one location that you know people are looking for you, your type of artistic Right. There's a lot of other websites out there too, but yeah, I'd say get to some show. I like the, I like the littler shows now. They're a little more personal. They feel more like art shows more than anything else now too. Like that's why I like monster Palooza. That's why I liked Lightbox. That's why, uh, you know, designer con was a lot of fun. Like don't get me wrong. Comic con is always fun to go to, but it's been taken over so much by all the major studios and networks and things. It's just like, it's massive, massive thing now. 
And I enjoy the artist alley almost more than the rest of the show whenever I go to Comic-Con. Because then you're sitting there talking to art. Last time I was there, I talked to some kid that was like 14. He had his own booth that his parents paid for. And he was selling his own artwork of Marvel. And his stuff was amazing. And and he was learning. He was teaching ZBrush to himself. I'm like, this kid's amazing. I'm like, you're, you're going to make it. I'm like, looked at the dad and mom. I'm like, don't worry about it. Your kid's going to make it. Let him just, I'm, listen, I'm. I love that you're supporting him because some parents would not support because they would say, Art, you're not going to make money, which is crazy because there's some people make millions of dollars playing video games right now. I love that you're supporting him. I'm looking at you dead in the eye. He's going to make it. He's going to make it. He's already got the chops going in the right direction right now. He's got the passion and he's got the will. He's going to make it. No problem. So it's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. A doubt. Great. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, so that's it, I guess. I'm going to put your website in the link, whatever link yeah. you want to so, put. Yeah, so yeah, sculptcorner.com. Yeah, that's my website now. Um, and this, I'm just starting this out. So I'm planning to build a lot of stuff off of this. And then um, obviously my Instagram is where people can also get a hold of me. This is Paul. Uh, which is just, yeah, that Gabriel Paul. Just look for the <laughs> yeah. Funko version of me. Yeah. Uh, Funko actually made a couple version, two of those. And I was like shocked that they did for fun. They made a Funko of me and Louie once. <laughs> that's um, you? <laughs> Yeah, that's me. That's <laughs> I wanted to right say here. it. It's that's, funny. I wanted to say Funko that. Too. Paul. <laughs> Hold on a second. Here, look. This that's, Funko that's did. They weird. made two of them. Here's one of them. Here's one of them. <laughs> you got to send me one of that. Do you have any copy of it? I'm going to put it on no, my desk for my one podcast. They made, no, they, they, they made one-offs of them. <laughs> There's awesome. another one I have in my Pixelogic office, too, that they made on me. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. And this is straight off the printer, this one. Which, this one's straight off the... A color printer. We should all have uh, one of those. <laughs> right off Miniac. <laughs> Mini Paul. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. A Funko Paul. Funko Paul. Funko Paul. Funko Paul. Yep. All right. So okay. that's it. Thanks, Funko Paul. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> sure, man. I'm going to stop recording. Bye, everyone. Bye.